gospel reading for this Ash Wednesday comes from Matthew chapter 26, verses 1 through 5. When Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, Not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Another day to see your grace. Another day to experience your love for us. Lord, as the storms are blowing and going outside, we ask that you would continue to keep us safe. Keep us safe in your word. Keep us safe in your grace. Allow us to journey with you this Lenten season and see your love for us as you died and rose again so that we might be with you. Lord, if it is your will, bring us back together soon to worship as your body. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace are to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, if you know anything about Oklahoma, you probably know something about its, its weather. Unlike the, the storms that are going on outside, it has a little bit different wicked weather. It has, you know, warm air coming up from the Gulf. It has cool air, dry air, warm, wet air, cool, dry air from the Central Plains, and then dry, warm air from the Southwest. And when those three air masses meet, you better watch out. There's some pretty wicked, wild weather that takes place. Get down in your basement, get to the storm shelter, and begin to pray. I don't know if anybody's been through a tornado. I would think some of you have because of the history of St. Peter. I experienced a tornado in a little different way. It was actually spawned off of Hurricane Alicia. Uh, there was a hurricane that came up through Houston, and, and some, some tornadoes were spawned in our areas, in our neighborhood, and sure enough, trees were uprooted, and roofs were destroyed, and all of that. And it was pretty crazy. Well, if you haven't been through a tornado, you've been through some severe, severe weather, where the sky turns black, maybe even that greenish color where the wind starts to howl and the lightning is crashing and the thunder is rolling and, and all of that and it's raining, you know, buckets. You know, with Ash Wednesday, we start the beginning of Lent. And in this Lenten journey this year, we're going to go to different places of Jesus' passion. We're going to go to the garden. We're going to go to Pilate's judgment hall. We're going to go to Golgotha. But tonight we start with Jerusalem, and we journey to Jesus with Jesus there. When Jesus had finished all of these sayings, is recorded by Matthew five times. It shows that Jesus has concluded another large segment of teaching. It's believed that Matthew is is kind of basing his structure off of the Pentateuch, the first five books of the of the Old Testament. The Jews loved that, and they even lifted that up above other scriptures. And so here comes Matthew, and he says, well, I'm going to use that same structure. Why is this all important, you ask? Well, at the beginning of our reading, we heard those words for the fifth time. When Jesus had finished all of these sayings, Matthew is about to wrap up his gospel for us. But that doesn't mean that it's going to end quietly. It doesn't mean that it's just going to kind of end. No, there is a storm that is brewing. There is, there is wind that is starting to howl, and the sky is turning black right now. What's going to happen? Well, Jesus tells his disciples, in two days is the Passover, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. The storm is raging, and Jesus is in the midst of it. Maybe there's times in your life, or maybe even right now, that you've been out in the open, exposed, vulnerable. I know some of you are raising teenagers right now. Others might be struggling financially. 
Maybe you've lost the loved one of your life. Maybe, maybe just age is starting to, to creep up and, and you're worried about the end of life kind of issues. Maybe the doctor has used the C word, cancer. You know, there's some storms that come and go and we praise God for that, but there is one storm that has been with us the whole time. And that's the storm of sin. That's the storm that, uh, of our, our failings and our faults and our, our, our original sin that's been passed down. And if left unchecked, it will continue and destroy everything. What does that sin look like? Well, let's, let's go back to the text. This is Matthew 26, 3 through 5. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered at the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. The high priest at the time was named Joseph Caiaphas. He ruled from 18 to 36 AD, longer than other high priests around him. It says something about him, that he was shrewd, that he was smart, that he was cunning, that he dealt with people in a political and, and, and caring and not caring manner, whatever he needed to remain in power. And of course, he has an issue. He knows that he must have this Jesus arrested and killed. But he can't do it during the feast. He can't do it during the Passover. Why? Because the people could revolt, and that would be worse for him. But at the same time, he cannot let him go. He cannot let this opportunity pass. Because once the feast is over, Jesus could easily leave Jerusalem and head back to Galilee. And there find safety. There escape once more. Why do they want him dead? Because they're losing their place. See, the chief priest, the teachers of the law, they were the ones looked up to. They were the ones who had the seat of honor. They were the ones who, you know, everybody wanted to be like. But that is starting to change. Jesus has come on the scene. And his ministry is like unlike no other. It's one that draws the crowds. He's healing. He's teaching. He's teaching with authority, not like them. And he's teaching a different message, one of grace and one of peace. And so the people are flocking to them and the chief priests are worried. If we don't have him killed, we will lose our place and our power. Do you see what sin is? Sin is holding on to our place and not letting Jesus have his. Sin is, is keeping others down so that we can, can remain in power. We're not much different than the chief priest. We're not much different than the teachers of the law. We want what we have and so we grasp it tightly. Our power, our position, our, our, our possessions. Well, what does Jesus do? Does he just come to condemn us, to judge us, to lock us away and throw away the key? No, remember what he said. <coughs> Excuse me. Remember what he said. The Passover will happen in a couple days and the Son of Man will be delivered over to be crucified. Jesus goes. He travels to Golgotha. He travels to the place of the skull. There, he's in the midst of the storm. There, he, he, he speaks to us. Listen to him. What does he say? He says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I'm thirsty. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It is finished. He speaks to you. Are you hurt? Well, Jesus was hurt. Are you bleeding? Jesus bled. Are, are, are you gasping for air? Jesus gasped for air as well. Is your heart broken? Jesus' heart was broken in two. He is with you. He knows what you are going through, and he's doing this so that he can rescue you. He speaks to you. He speaks to the husband who has, has anger issues and just lashes out on his kids. 
He speaks to the couple who, who just feels like their, their love for each other is no more. It just has dissolved. He speaks to the one who is struggling and does not know where to turn. What does he say? He says, I love you. I love you. He gets in the midst of our storm so that he can save us. How do we know he can do this? Well, we can go to the Old Testament. What's the greatest storm in the whole Old Testament? It's Egypt, right? God's people are enslaved in Egypt and, and they're struggling and Pharaoh is saying make more bricks and all of that. But yet God, in the midst of the wind and the rain and the, and the lightning, he saves his people. He delivers them with his outstretched arm. Even when they get to the Red Sea and everything looks like, like it's, it's an end, there's nowhere to go. He parts the sea so that they can walk through dry ground. In the midst of the storms of your life, God allows a path for you as well. See, he takes us to another place. He takes us in the passion to the Passover meal, where he gives us his body and blood. He gives us peace. He gives us hope. And you are invited to join him there as well. And the victory over the storms of life. And the victory over your greatest enemy, sin, death, and the devil. Jesus has won. Amen. Now may the peace that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. To life everlasting.